Now, what I'm going to read you next may upset some of you, but it's absolutely true. The events at Fatima in the early part of the century were scrutinized. On suspicion that it was alien manipulation, an intelligence operation was put into motion to penetrate the secrecy surrounding the event. The United States utilized its Vatican moles that had been recruited and nurtured during World War II and soon obtained the entire Vatican study, which included the prophecy. And I don't care what you've ever read before, you have not read the true prophecy. This prophecy stated that if man did not turn from evil and place himself at the feet of Christ, the planet would self-destruct and the events described in the book of Revelations would indeed come to pass. It stated that a child would be born who would unite the world with a plan for world peace and a false religion beginning in 1992. By 1995, the people would discern that he was evil and was indeed the Antichrist. World War III would begin in the Middle East in 1995 with an invasion of Israel by a United Arab Nation using conventional weapons which would culminate in a nuclear holocaust in the year 1999. Between 1999 and 2003, most of the life on this planet would suffer horribly and die as a result. The return of Christ would occur in the year 2011. Is this true? I don't know. I know that it was decided by the United States government that this was indeed an alien event and I believe that this is more deception which is being heaped upon us. So don't go out of here thinking that the world is going to end tomorrow because of this. It might because of something else, and I'm going to talk about that, but not because of this. When the aliens were confronted with this finding, they confirmed that it was true. The aliens explained that they had created us through hybridization and had manipulated the human race through religion, Satanism, witchcraft, magic, the occult, secret societies, etc. They further explained that they were capable of time travel and the events would indeed come to pass. Later exploitation of alien technology by the United States and the Soviet Union utilizing time travel confirmed that indeed something bad was going to happen. The aliens showed a hologram which they claimed was the actual crucifixion of Christ, which the government filmed. We did not know whether to believe them or not. Were they using our genuine religions to manipulate us? Or were they indeed the source of our religions with which they had been manipulating us all along? Or was this the beginning scenario of the genuine end times and the return of Christ which had been predicted in the Bible? No one knew the answer, and I don't know the answer either. A symposium was held in 1957, which was attended by some of the great scientific minds then living. It was held in Huntsville, Alabama. They reached the conclusion that by or shortly after the year 2000, the planet would self-destruct due to increased population and man's exploitation of the environment without any help from God or the aliens. By secret executive order of President Eisenhower, the Jason Scholars were ordered to study this scenario and make recommendations from their findings. This was done. The Jason Society confirmed the finding of the scientists and made three recommendations called Alternatives 1, 2, and 3. Alternative 1 was to use nuclear devices to blast holes in the stratosphere from which the heat and pollution could escape into space. I'll buy heat, but I'll never buy pollution. Change the human cultures from that of exploitation into cultures of environmental protection. Of the three, this was decided to be the least likely to succeed due to the inherent nature of man and the additional damage the nuclear explosions would themselves create. Alternative two was to build a vast network of underground cities and tunnels in which a select representation of all cultures and occupations would survive and carry on the human race. The rest of humanity would be left to fend for themselves on the surface of the planet. Alternative three was to exploit the alien and conventional technology in order for a select few to leave the earth and establish colonies in outer space. I am not able to either confirm or deny the existence of batch consignments of human slaves which would be used for the manual labor in the effort as a part of the plan. The moon, codenamed Adam, would be the object of primary interest, followed by the planet Mars, codenamed Eve. 
As a delaying action, all three alternatives included birth control, sterilization, forced if necessary, and the introduction of deadly microbes to control or slow the growth of the Earth's population. AIDS is only one result of these plans. There are others. It was decided, since the population must be reduced and controlled, that it would be in the best interest of the human race to rid ourselves of the undesirable elements of our society. The joint U.S. and Soviet leadership dismissed Alternative 1, but ordered work to begin on Alternative 2 and 3 virtually at the same time. Those of you in the state of Washington who report hearing machinery underground are probably correct. In 1959, the Rand Corporation hosted a deep underground construction symposium. I have a copy of this symposium report, which I'm not supposed to have. But nevertheless, I have it, approximately this thick. In the symposium report, machines are pictured and described which could bore a tunnel 45 feet in diameter at the rate of 5 feet per hour in 1959. Just think what they can do now. It also displays pictures of huge tunnels and underground vaults containing what appear to be complex facilities and possibly even cities. It appears that the previous five years of all-out underground construction had made very significant progress by that time. The ruling powers decided that one means of funding the Alien Connected and other black projects was to corner the illegal drug market. A young, ambitious member of the Council on Foreign Relations was approached. His name is George Bush, who at the time was the president and CEO of Zapata Oil based in Texas. Zapata Oil was experimenting with the new technology of offshore drilling. It was correctly thought that the drugs could be shipped from South America to the offshore platforms by fishing boat where it would then be taken to shore by the normal transportation used for supplies and personnel. By this method, no customs or law enforcement agency would subject the cargo to search. George Bush agreed to help and organize the operation in conjunction with the CIA. The plan worked better than anyone had thought and has since expanded worldwide and there are now many other methods of bringing the illegal drugs into the country. But it must always be remembered that George Bush began the sale of drugs to our children. Now, if you think I'm crazy, get off your butt and start digging, because you will find out that it's absolutely true. The CIA now controls all the world's illegal drug markets. The official space program was boosted by President Kennedy in his inaugural address when he mandated that the United States put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Although innocent in its conception, this mandate enabled those in charge to funnel vast amounts of money into black projects and conceal the real space program from the American people. A similar program in the Soviet Union served the same purpose. In fact, a joint alien United States and Soviet Union base already existed on the moon at the very moment Kennedy spoke the words. On May 22, 1962, a space probe landed on Mars and confirmed the existence of an environment which could support life. Not long afterward, the construction of a colony on the planet Mars began in earnest. Today, there is a colony which exists on the planet Mars. It is a United States-Russian alien facility. If you believe it's outrageous, stick around a few years. This is very disturbing information, and I don't expect anyone to believe it. I don't expect one of you to believe what I'm telling you. And I knew that when I came here. I'm not one of you. I'm not a ufologist. I'm not a researcher. I have an obligation to inform the public, and once that's done, I've done my job. From then on, it's up to you, not me.